Ever wondered what would happen if Izuku was a ghost vigilante? Let's find out. Before we start, I want you to like, share and sub. This really helps. Let's begin. Izuku Midoriya, a quirkless 10-year-old boy with greenish hair, is standing on a roof. In front of him is his idol, All Might. Can a quirkless person become a hero? That question has been bothering the freckled boy for a long time. He is finally getting the answer. From the number one hero All Might himself. No, that simple two-lettered word crushed Izuku's dreams. It is way too dangerous. The quirkless person wouldn't even be able to protect themselves, let alone others. With that All Might, aka Ass Smite, left. Izuku fell onto his knees, his eyes in total shock. He always dreamed about becoming a hero, like All Might. The boy has been bullied a lot for that dream. You too weak. Keep dreaming, stupid Deku. Why don't you take a swan dive off the roof, maybe you'll get a quirk in your next life. Maybe Kach-chan is right, it's not like anyone is going to miss me anyway. When Izuku found out he was quirkless, his dad left him, and his mother has become much more colder towards the boy. Izuku Midoriya stepped towards the edge of the roof, he felt the wind rushing through his hair. The boy took a deep breath and closed his eyes. He spread his arms, ready to let himself fall off. It's not worth it, trust me a voice behind Izuku. He turned around to see a man in a black cloth looking at him. Who are you? The name is Akemi, I'm a vigilante. What's a vigilante? Izuku is a very smart boy, but he has never heard of a vigilante before. The man smiled softly. It's someone who saves people, just like heroes. The difference between heroes and vigilantes is that heroes get money and fame for what they do, vigilantes don't. We save people because that's the right thing to do. Izuku relaxes a little, curious to learn more about vigilantes. The vigilante, Akemi, steps slightly closer towards the green-haired boy. Another difference is that vigilantes don't have a license, which makes their work. Not illegal Izuku thought about that. So vigilantes are basically illegal heroes. Yup. Akemi smiled softly again. Now why don't you come here, so I can tell you more about vigilantes. No. Why not? Because it doesn't matter anyway. I am corkless. Izuku started tearing up a bit. He expected the man to turn around and walk away. But he didn't. So? Izuku was surprised. What? You aren't going to tell me I am too weak and worthless. Aren't you gonna give up on me? No? Why would I do that? Now Izuku was absolutely flabbergasted. Be because I, I'm, I'm quirkless. I don't care if you're quirkless. Now come off that edge so we can talk properly. Izuku gaped at the vigilante for a few seconds. No, it's too late for me. Izuku smiled softly. It was nice meeting you, Akemi. I guess this is goodbye. Izuku let himself fall backwards, off the roof. The wind aggressively rushing through the boy's hair. No? Akemi's voice. Izuku closed his eyes. It felt like everything went in slow motion. Am I, dead? This chapter's cover is made by, https colon slash slash yadu dot b slash y l n k o 1 4 t f 9 o. The light. Izuku opened his eyes. What happened dot, am I dead? Izuku pushed himself up. The boy looked around, with narrowed eyes, since his eyes have yet to get used to the light. He is sitting in front of the building that he just jumped off. As he stood up he noticed something below him. His own body in a pile of blood. What the? He looked in the window behind him, expecting to see his own reflection. But no. The only reflection he saw was the body on the ground. Am I, am I ghost? Suddenly he heard a scream. The ghost Izuku turned around to see a woman looking horrified at his body. A few seconds later there was a whole group standing around the body. Izuku couldn't take it anymore, he ran. With no idea where he was going, he just ran. Or more like, float. He stopped in an alleyway. He fell onto his knees, crying. Who is there? Izuku looked up to see something or someone walking towards him. Floating clothing stepped out of the shadows. No, those clothing weren't just floating. There is someone in them. They probably have an invisibility quirk. Hello? The invisible person said. See can you hear me? The invisible person got startled. Yes, I can hear you. Now where are you and who are you? I, I, I'm right behind you. The invisible person turned around. Their eyes scanning the place now in front of them. I can't see you, do you have an invisibility quirk just like me? I, I don't know, Izuku started sobbing again. Hey it's alright, what is your name? I'm, Izuku Midoriya. Nice to meet you Izuku. I'm Toru Hagaruk. It stayed silent for a second. What is your quirk? I, I don't know. I was supposed to be quirkless. But I think my quirk only started working after I, Izuku took a deep breath after I jumped off a building. Hagaruk froze for a second. Then, then how are you alive right now? I don't think I'm alive. So, you like a ghost? Is it your quirk? Hagaruk asked in disbelief it is so cool. What can you do with that quirk? Can you make yourself visible? I, don't know. I can try. Izuku closed his invisible eyes and focus. He visions himself as visible. He opens his eyes and looks at his hands. His hands and the rest of his body were still slightly transparent. It worked. I am visible. 
Hagar clucked at him a bit uncomfortable. What? She pulled her phone out of her pocket, she took a picture of him, and then showed it to him. The picture showed him sitting on the floor, but there was something off. There was something missing, his head. Oh my oh my. Hagar chuckled. What are you laughing at? He said all might instead of God, are you a fan of him or something? Yeah I mean no I mean, I was, until, Izuku turned his invisible head away, he clearly was not ready to talk about what happened earlier that day. Hey, it's alright. You don't have to tell me, let's just try to find how to make your head visible. The rest of the day Izuku and Hagaru kept trying to figure out how Izuku's quirk works. After a while Izuku was able to make himself fully visible, not even slightly transparent. They discovered that he could go through walls, actually everything could go through the boy. He couldn't even hold anything, unless he really focused on his hands. If he focused hard enough the greenette could make himself not go through, sort of human. He trained all day, but in the end he always stayed to go through useless ghost. No, I'm not useless. I'm going to save people, not for fame or money, I'm going to save them because it's the right thing to do. I'm going to become a vigilante, just like a Kemi. I gotta go now, it's getting late. Let's play tomorrow again. Just message me about the time, you got my number. Higakure said as she walked away. Izuku was sitting on a beach, he moves his toes through the sand as he waves Hagaru goodbye. He had been training with Higakure all day again. Izuku had decided to keep the fact that he is. Sort of. Alive a secret that was necessary if he wanted to become a vigilante. The green had turned himself invisible again. It would be bad if someone who knew him when he was still alive saw him. He pushes himself up and starts heading home. Home? Yay home. Izuku has been living in an abandoned cabin in the woods next to the city. A 10 year old all on his own living in the woods. Isn't that dangerous? Oh no, the young boy manages himself perfectly fine. He usually borrows some food from nearby shops. He won't starve, that's for sure. He also got some nice furniture and clothing from a big mall. Hagar told him how the disappearing products have been all over the news. When Izuku got home he put on his self-made vigilante outfit. It was a dark green hoodie with black pants and a belt. He had a bunny mask which covered basically his whole face except his eyes. In the mask he had installed a borrowed voice changer, that way the heroes won't discover that he is still a child. Izuku decided that his vigilante name was going to be Yurei. It's Japanese for ghost. Izuku no, Yurei was ready. Ready for his first patrol as vigilante. 11pm, Izuku was floating over the roofs when he heard a high-pitched scream. The girl around his age, surrounded by three thugs. Only three. Well this is gonna be easy. Dot Izuku made himself invisible and floated towards the thugs. He hardened his fist and hit one of the thugs right in his nose. What the hell? The boy hardened his foot and kicked the thug in his nuts, one down. The fight between the thugs and the new vigilante only lasted a few seconds, Izuku took the thugs down easily. Who is there? Ask show yourself. Alright, I'm still invisible. Izuku turned himself visible again, which made the girl flinch. Hey it's okay, I'm not going to hurt you. The girl relaxed a bit, she had brown hair and eyes. What is your name sir? The name is Yurei, I'm a new vigilante here. Nice to meet you. Oh right. I'm Achako Uraka, thank you so much for saving me, Mr. Yurei. My pleasure, Uraka. Now, do you have a phone with you? Yes Uraka pulled her phone out of her pocket. Great. Can you call the police and tell them there is a new vigilante in the city? The brunette nodded. Thank you, Yurei out. He turned himself invisible and floated away. Well that went smooth. A few days later. It's 9am, Izuku came back from patrol a few hours ago, and is now lying on an old couch. He hears a knock on the door of his cabin, as soon as he opens the door Hagaruk storms inside. What is she so excited about? izuku -kun. Hey, Higakure-chan. You've heard about the new vigilante Yurei right? Oh? Yeah? What about him? You're him, right? Suddenly a grin appears on Hagaruk's invisible face. Well this is disappointing. Aw oh, man. How did you know? I got my ways Hagaruk tries to act casual, but fails horribly. Izuku bursts out laughing. You got your ways PFFT. Hey. After laughing for a while Izuku turned serious again. No but seriously, how did you find out? The name, I mean Yure. PFFT. Only an idiot like you could come up with a name that literally means ghost. I thought a vigilante didn't want people to find out that type of stuff. Come on. No one is going to take the name that serious. We'll see, izuku -kun. Four years later. Izuku is now 14. I thought I was going to go on a nice and peaceful patrol, but now I'm being chased by three pro heroes. Eraserhead, Hawks and Endeavor were chasing Izuku. Hawks and Endeavor aren't going to be a problem, they can't even touch the vigilante. He's a ghost after all. But Eraserhead however, if the homeless looking man activated his quirk on Izuku, he'll get eaten right back into his grave where he belongs. Why is that? You ask. Eraserhead's quirk is called Erasure. That means that he can temporarily erase other people's powers simply by looking at them. Izuku ran into an alleyway. It's a dead end. 
But wait, why am I running? I'm a ghost, um fell I forgot. Chilly anyway so. There's nowhere you can go now. Give up. The vigilante chuckled as he turned towards the heroes. PFFT, did you really think it was going to be this easy to capture me? Izuku floated backwards, straight into the wall. You ray out. When the green had entered his cabin, he was greeted by a confetti cannon exploding in his face. Happy birthday Izuku. What? Oh it's my birthday. You forgot about your birthday again, didn't you? Oh my god, Hagar can read minds. No I cannot read your mind, you thing dumbass. Hagar chuckled at Izuku's shocked face. Well how did you know her? I've known you for years now, you so damn predictable. What the what? I am not that predictable. Hagar just looked at him, unbothered. Okay, predict this. Izuku ran towards the cake and threw it in Hagrid's face. How predictable was that, huh? Predictable enough for me to bring an extra cake, Hagrid said as she showed him a new cake. I love you Hagrid and Izuku said as they began eating the cake. Ayo, it is just a cake, no need to get all flirty. I am not being flirty. I meant it in a friendly way. Izuku sputtered as he turned all red. Now you look like a tomato, maybe that should be your vigilante name, Tomato Ghost. F you. Love you too, Izu-san. The next day, Izuku was on patrol again when he heard a scream. A drunk man trying to hook up with a young lady. You nasty. Dot Izuku ran towards the man and kicked him right in his stomach. He received a hard smack on his mask. This fight didn't go on for long, the man was too drunk to even see where he hit. When the man was down Izuku turned to check on the young girl. Just when he wanted to ask the girl if she was alright he heard footsteps behind him. Nice to see you here again, Yurei. Hawks, great. Izuku rolled his eyes as he turned around. Hey Hawks, he now noticed that his voice didn't sound as deep as it should. Hawks also noticed and was shocked by how childish the vigilante's voice was. If my voice changer gave up Izuku thought out loud. Wait, you're a kid. Hawks asked in disbelief. Depends, what do you understand under the word kid? Ha. Huh. Well ah, uh, someone who is under the age of 18. Then yeah sure, I'm a kid. How old are you? Ha. Huh. Nice try Hawks, but I'm gonna go now. You ray out. Izuku waved just before making himself invisible again. He floated away towards the next roof and decided to take a break on there. They found out I'm a child, well dot. Tsukauchi is a detective who has been working on Yurei's case. He has been trying to figure out the vigilante's identity for 4 years now. They don't even know his hair and eye color, since he always wears his mask and hoodie. Neither do they know his quirk, age or real name. Actually they know pretty much nothing about this certain vigilante. Tsukauchi was staring at papers that should be the vigilante's files, but the only thing filled in was the name Yurei. He was about to give up when he got a call from Hawks. Hi Hawks. Tsukauchi. You won't believe what I discovered. What? I already called Aizawa, he is on his way to the police station now. I'll tell you when I get there. Then what's the point in calling me if you're not going to tell me over the phone anyway? Hawks can be so annoying sometimes. It's about the vigilante, Yurei. Hold on, I'm almost at the station. Hawks hung up. Eraserhead was the first to arrive at the station. Hawks came in later. I was sleeping, what is so important to wake me up? Aizawa was obviously irritated, but he always was so that's nothing new. I figured out the vigilante's age. What? Well not exactly, but I know that he is under the age of 18. What? So you, Hawks, mean to tell me that the vigilante that I've chased for 4 years now, is a child? Yeah. How do you know? Well I saw him just after he kicked some drunk man's ass. His voice changer probably broke during the fight because when he spoke to me he had a child voice. So I asked if he was a child and he said yes. Why would he tell you that? Well he obviously had not much of a choice since I already heard his voice, and no way I was going to believe him if he said he was some 40 year old man. A child shouldn't be out there doing such dangerous work. But why Zawa, you do care about him don't you? What? No. No need to be ashamed, did Zawa. TSK. Kotchan can cry. This chapter's cover is made by. It's Larvana. Izuku was sitting on a roof. He was looking out over the city, but there was no sign of danger. He heard silent footsteps behind him. Hey Eraserhead, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Do what? Don't activate your cork on me, unless you want me to die. Aizawa froze. What? My cork is Eraser, that won't kill you. Oh yes sir it will, let's just say my cork is the only thing that keeps me sort of alive. Izuku patted the place beside him, signifying Eraserhead to come and sit next to him. Eraserhead sat down next to the boy and looked at him. What is your quirk? The vigilante chuckled. Nice try, Aizawa. Aizawa looked away from the boy, a little disappointed. You know that being a vigilante is dangerous, especially for a child. Oh, so the chicken nugget has told you already about me being a child. Guess I don't need this voice changer anymore then, Izuku said as he turned off his voice changer. Why did you become a vigilante? Why not become a hero? It stayed silent for a moment. I want to save people because it's the right thing to do, not for money or fame. Heroes only save people if there is something in it for them. 
When I needed saving a hero left, the one who tried to save me was a vigilante. Why did you say tried? Didn't they succeed? Maybe you'll figure that story out one day. Aizawa sighed. Julie anyways so I'm gonna go now. Izuku stood up and walked towards the edge of the roof. He turned around, facing Aizawa. Yurei out. The vigilante let himself fall off the building. He became invisible and floated away just before he could hit the ground. Aizawa rushed towards the edge, as he looked down the vigilante already disappeared. TSK, problem child. When the vigilante was on his way home, he walked by a graveyard. In that graveyard his body was buried. Normally he always avoided the graveyard, it brought back too many memories, and it was painful to see that nobody visited his grave. But this time there was someone at his grave, a boy his age with blonde spiky hair. The greenette recognized the boy, Koch-chan. Koch-chan is his childhood best friend, he used to bully Izuku for being crookless. Izuku was curious, what is Koch-chan doing at my grave? The invisible boy walked towards the boy standing at his grave. He now noticed that Koch-chan was crying his eyes out. Wait he is crying. Can Koch-chan cry? I'm sorry, you damn nerd. It's all my fault, I told you to J jump off I didn't mean it. It's alright Koch-chan, I'm happy now, because of you. I got in your A, isn't that amazing? It's not like I'm going to be able to make friends anyway, you're the only friend I've ever had. He got in your A, I knew he could do it. I miss you, Deku. I miss you too, Koch-chan. Bakugo flinched and turned towards the voice. Oh I said that out loud. Deku oi. Are you here, Tai nerd? They know Izuku quickly ran away, leaving Bakugo looking confused around. When Izuku arrived at his cabin, he noticed that he had 10 missed calls from Hagaruk. Oh dot. He called Hagaruk back as fast as he could. You Hagaruk, you good. Finally. Why didn't you pick up? I called you like 20 times. I was on patrol, and actually you called me 10 times, not 20. Yeah yeah no one cares. Anyways, I got my letter from Yue. Did you get in? Yes. Yes girl. I knew you could do it. And guess who I saw when I was on my way home? Who? Kachan. Isn't that the angry Pomeranian who always bullied you? Yea, but he changed. I saw him crying over my grave saying that he was sorry and stuff. So cute. And he also told my dead ass that he got in Yue, maybe he is in the same class as you. I swear if that little piece of dog is in my class, I will personally beat the f out of him. They do I have a chance in stopping you. No? Yea, alright, see you tomorrow. Sure. I haggard Chan. Later, Izukun. I'm bored. Izuku was hanging on the couch, staring at the ceiling. Then go do something. Hagaruk was sitting on a chair in front of the couch. She was playing a game on her phone. Like what, Smortis? I don't know. Vigilante stuff, go on patrol or something. Are you crazy, it's noon. Go get friends. You are my friend. You can't have only one friend, Izu. Do you want to die alone or something? I'm already dead, Dumbus. Up Hagaruk bursts out laughing, and a few moments later Izuku joins too. Are we crazy for laughing about death? Yeah, probably. No, but seriously, you should get some new friends. How? How could I possibly get other friends? Do I just have to bump into someone and say here? I am Izuku Midoriya, also known as the Vigilante Yurei. Everyone thinks I'm dead and technically I am dead. The police, the detective and about 4 pro heroes are after me, since my vigilante job is illegal, as f let's be friends. Um, no, I don't think that would work. You think? Hagrick sighed. Just introduce yourself as Izuku and pretend like you're alive. What if they touch me and their hand goes right through me? Just say that is your cork or something. Izuku mentally fascinated himself. This is a terrible idea. Alright, now where do I find these future friends? People your age are normally hanging in either a park or a mall, just go there and see if you spot a cute one. Oh man, I have too much social anxiety for this. Can you come with me? Nah dude, I have school tomorrow. What does that have to do with anything? It means that I go to school, that means that I have other friends. I'm going to hang with some girls from UA. Who? Hiro and Mina, now don't get all jealous with them. Izuku gasped dramatically. I would never get jealous at your friends he said with puppy eyes. Oh f off, get your lonely ass off the couch and find friends. If you say so, miss socializer. Izuku stood up and walked out of the cabin. The greenette was now standing in the park, looking for friends. It's so weird, standing here so everyone can see me. I'm almost always invisible when I'm outside, except if I'm doing my vigilante work off course. Wait what if I bump into someone who knows me, what if I bump into Koch-chan? Oh no 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 no, this is a bad idea. Izuku was starting to panic when he felt someone standing right behind him. Excuse him. Izuku turned around and kicked the guy in his nuts as reflex. The guy's hand shot towards his balls when he fell onto the ground. Oh my god. I'm so 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 sorry. He now noticed that there were two people, the one he just kicked in his nuts had red spiky hair and red eyes. The other one, who is now sitting next to the red haired guy, has blonde hair, parted to the right with a black lightning shaped streak on the left of his head. Hiroshima are you okay? The blonde asked. 
No, he is obviously not okay, you dumbass. Yeah yeah, I'm fine. The red-haired guy, his name is apparently Kirishima, pushed himself up. He turned to face Izuku. Oh mama. What was it just now? I'm so sorry. It was a reflex. The blonde has also stood up now. A reflex kicking someone in his nuts is a reflex. Yeah, I take self-defense lessons, Izuku lied. The silence fell, the two strangers were now just staring at Izuku. Damn, this silence is painful. Someone has to break it. I'm so sorry, are you okay? Hey, it's okay dude. I'm Ijiro Kirishima. I'm Denki Kaminari. Nice to meet you, my name is Izuku. Manly. Well Izuku, we came up to you because we saw you looking around. It seemed like you were about to have a panic attack, we wanted to check if you were okay. I'm fine, thanks. I'm just not that much of a socializer. My friend told me I should make others some friends, that's why I'm here. But you know, so much people, it's quite overwhelming. We can be your friends. Yeah dude, let's be friends. Well uh, yeah okay. This is going easier than I thought it would. The boys hung out in the park for a while, just chatting. It was starting to get late so they exchanged numbers and said goodbye. Rakuja da boys. Members. Ijiro Kirishima, Denki Kaminari, Izuku. Kaminari. You guys. Kirishima. Why is our chat's name da boys? Izuku. That's a name for a group of F-boys. Kaminari. That's cause we are F-boys. Kirishima. What did I miss a few chapters here? Izuku. I'm literally gay, Denki. Kirishima. No, yes same. Kaminari. What? Kirishima. You can't tell me that you're straight, Denki. Kaminari. Oh man you got me, I'm bi. Izuku changed the group's name to Fruity MFS. Izuku changed Izuku's name to Mr. Deadman. Izuku changed Ijiro Kirishima's name to Hard Boy. Hard Boy what the? Izuku changed Denki Kaminari's name to Pikachu. Pikachu. Yo that's cute. Hard Boy. Why is Izuku's name Mr. Deadman? Mr. Deadman. Maybe one day I'll tell you, but for now I would love to see you try to find out. Pikachu. Oh man, why do you have to be so mysterious? We don't even know your full name. Hard boy. Yeah dude, what's your full name? Mr. Deadman. Come on guys, we just met today. I can't go off and tell you all my secrets. Pikachu. Oh why is your full name a secret? Mr. Deadman went offline. Hard boy. What the? Pikachu. Kirishima, did we just become friends with the criminal? Hard boy. What? No, he would never yay probably. Brouch at 3D MFS. Members. Hard boy, Pikachu, Mr. Deadman. Hard boy. Ayo Izuku, do you wanna go to the mall with me and Denki? Mr. Deadman. Sure. Hard boy. We might bring a friend of us with us, is that okay? Mr. Deadman. Yeah I guess. Hard boy. Cool. See ya at 2pm at the mall, dude. Izuku, Kaminari and Kirishima met at the mall that day, they were having fun. Oh this hat matches your hero outfit, Kirishima. Wait hero outfit. Did I miss something? But we didn't tell you. Well we go to UA, you know, that hero school. Oh 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 that's so cool. I wish I could go to UA, a friend of mine also goes to UA. What class are they in? Maybe we know them. She's in class 1A. What? No way. We're also in class 1A. What's her name? Toru Hagurk. Who the F is that? The invisible girl, Dumbus. By the way, we also invited a friend of ours, he should be almost here. Oh oh is he a classmate of yours? Yeah he is. What is his name? Katsuki Bakugo. Izuku froze. OF, the angry Pomeranian. No no, this can't be happening. I have to get out of here. You good Izuku. You look like you've seen a ghost. Then he saw a blonde haired boy coming towards him. Oi Jiro, is this the mysterious friend you told me about? Bakugo and Izuku locked eyes. Well dot, did he recognize me? Yeah he did. Without saying something, Izuku ran. He ran towards the exit as fast as he could. Oh I Deku. Is it you? Kachchan was following the dead boy. Oh yay, my quirk. The specky blonde ran after Izuku and screamed die. Damn dude, I thought you regretted telling me to die. Izuku turned around and looked into the frustrated boy's eyes. Can't kill a dead person, can you, Kachchan? That's the last thing he said before turning invisible and floating away. Izuku's childhood best friend just stood there, staring at the place where the green had disappeared. Hiroshima and Denki came running toward Bakugo. Yo Bakubo, are you okay? What just happened? Do you know Izuku? Why did you call him Deku? Bakugo fell onto his knees, in total shock. B but H is dead. What? Who is dead? Talk to me, Bakubo. Tears started streaming down Bakugo's face. What the Bakugo can cry? Denki whispered. Kirishima and Kaminari kept asking Bakugo what happened, but he just won't answer. That's when Kirishima decided to message Izuku. Rauksha 3D MFS. Members. Hard boy, Pikachu, Mr. Deadman. Hard boy. Izuku, where are you? Pikachu. Yay and what just happened? Hard boy. Do you and Bakubo know each other? 
Mr. Deadman. Ask him, I'm not in the mood to talk right now. The catcher. Bakugo doesn't want to tell us either. Mr. Deadman. Well that's your problem, not mine. Bye guys. Hard boy. Izuku, don't. Mr. Deadman went offline. The catcher. F. Kirishima tried calling Izuku, but he didn't pick up. I called him like a hundred times now, but he just won't pick up. Great, what now? Hmm, let's get the Kubo home. Maybe he wants to talk to us about it later, cause right now he doesn't seem mentally stable enough. They looked at Bakugo who was still in shock. With Izuku. Izuku was sitting in his cabin, progressing what the F just happened. Damn, I fed up. He puts his elbows on the table and rests his head on his hands. What if Bakugo snitches on me? F, if he tells the police that I am still alive, he also saw my quirk, they might make a connection with the vigilante Yurei's quirk. Especially because I died in the same week as when Yurei started with his vigilante work. FFF. Izuku stood up and grabbed his phone. That's when he realized he didn't even have Koch-chan's number. He sighed, guess I'll have you ask Hiroshima and Kaminari. He really didn't want to text those two, because they'll start asking too much questions. But he doesn't really have a choice, so Izuku opened up the chats on his phone. Brauchit for the MFS. Members. Hard boy, Pikachu, Mr. Deadman. Mr. Deadman is online. Hard boy. Finally. Izuku is online. Mr. Deadman. I'm still not in the mood for your questions, and honestly I doubt that I ever will be. Pikachu. Come on dude. We deserve at least a simple explanation. Mr. Deadman. Everyone has secrets, let a teenager have their privacy. Hard boy. Normal teenager privacy, sure. But you just almost gave our friend a heart attack, and not to mention you disappeared in thin air. We thought your quirk was just being go through. Mr. Deadman. I wish I could tell you everything, but I really can't. The catcher. Come on dude, we won't snitch on you. Mr. Deadman. I bet you won't say the same after I have told you everything. Hard boy. So you don't trust us. The catcher. Ouch, that hurts. Mr. Deadman. I do trust you. But this is just a too serious and long story. Hard boy. Go ahead. We have time. Mr. Deadman. Yeah you do, but I don't. I came online to ask for Koch Chan's number, I have to ask him something important. The catcher. Koch Chan. Mr. Deadman. Oh, sorry that's just some old stupid nickname for Bakugo. Hard boy. Are you and Bakubo childhood friends? Mr. Deadman. Sort of, but I don't have time for these questions. Please just hurry up and give me Bakugo's number. The catcher. You're not going to ask him to date you or something, are you? Mr. Deadman. WTF Pikachu, no. And first of all, I would have a chance, Bakugo is already dating Kirishima. Pikachu. What? Hard boy. How do you know I mean, what? Mr. Deadman. It's obvious, hard boy. Now please just hurry up and give me Bakugo's number. Hard boy. Okay, so it's insert Bakugo's number. Mr. Deadman. Thanks man. Mr. Deadman went offline. Katsuki Bakugo. Izuku. Hey hey Kach-chan, Kirishima gave me your number. Izuku changed Katsuki Bakugo's name to Kach-chan. Kach-chan changed Izuku's name to Deku. Kach-chan. What the f, damn nerd. How are you not dead? I think saw your dead ass body. Why would you traumatize me like that? Deku. I'm sorry Kach-chan, I did really jump though. I was supposed to die, but I didn't because of my quirk. After I jumped it turned out I had a quirk which keeps me from going to the afterlife, ha, <laughs> yay. Kach-chan. Why the f would you jump off a building anyway? Were you so thing dumb you know that jumping off a building is supposed to kill you right? Deku. Yeah, that's like the whole thing point, Dumbus. Kachan. Since when do you curse? Don't think you're better than me, Dumbus. Deku. You were so much kinder to me when you stood at my grave, thinking I was dead. Kachan. F. You saw that. Deku. You don't have to pretend, Kachan. I know you care about me, I care about you too. Kachan. Then why did you leave me? Deku. Because back then I didn't know you cared about me. You think bullied me. And you were the one who told me to jump off a building, remember? Deku. Hello. Deku. Thing reply. Deku. Koch-chan. Deku. Oh thing lord, I shouldn't have texted that. Deku. Hey Koch-chan, don't worry about it. I forgave you. Deku. Deku. You really aren't going to reply, are you? Deku. Okay let's stop the emotional rollercoaster and get to business. Koch-chan, I texted you to ask you something, something very important. I know it is going to be hard, but please please don't tell anyone about my quirk and the fact that I am still sort of alive. I gave up on my dream of becoming a hero, but I have another dream now. And if you tell the police about me that dream will be ruined. Kachan. I wasn't even planning on telling someone, nerd. Especially not the police. Deku. Thank you, Kachan. Izuku was out on his nightly patrol. He just escaped the pro hero present Mick, and was now running through another alleyway. Sorry it's always the alleyways. He stopped running when he heard voices. 
As he sets one step towards the sound, he steps on a twig. F. The voices stop talking, Izuku hold his breath. Oh I have a quirk, right. I keep forgetting about it. He turned invisible and now floated. A few seconds later the people start talking again, and the vigilante floated closer and closer towards him. He was now close enough to see the people who the voices belonged to. A girl, maybe around his age, with blonde hair and buns. She had a knife in her hands and played with it carelessly. A man with blue hair and crusty ass lips, he had cut off hands placed all over him. What a creep. The last person standing there was a young man with obviously dyed black hair. Parts of his skin were burned and attached to him with staples. How the f do people find this burnt chicken wing attractive? Izuka recognized these people as members of the law. Toga, Shigaraki and Dobby. Usually the vigilante saves innocent people from the bad guys, but his job as vigilante also involves helping some bad guys. Although he won't hurt innocent people like the bad guys do, sometimes he helps some villains with plants. Izuku floats closer to the villains, curious what they're talking about. If it is just a plan to take heroes down, he might help them with it, or he'll just float away. So what is our plan for tomorrow? Are they really going to discuss that here? How dumb are these bitches? It's easy, I arranged some villains who will help us at the attack. Kurgiri teleports us all in the USJ. If I'm correct a class, I believe 1A will be there. All Might will be teaching them so that is our chance. As soon as All Might shows up we'll send our Nomu to him and boom All Might dead, victory. That last bit sounds a bit unrealistic, but yay. I get to see his blood. Weird blood obsessed vampire Dobby mumbles under his breath. Hey I heard that. Toga and Dobby started arguing, Izuku decided it was time to leave. So the vigilante floated away as he made up his mind. What am I going to do? Class 1A, that's Hagaruk's class. Not to mention Koch-chan, Kirishima and Kaminari are also part of that class. If I have to do something, those villains won't hesitate on killing people who get in their way. And when it comes to killing All Might, Koch-chan will definitely try to get in their way. You know what, I'll text Kirishima and Kaminari about it. They can tell the teachers. So that next morning, Izuku texts the Grouchit. Grouchit for the MFS. Members. Hard boy, Pikachu, Mr. Deadman. Mr. Deadman. Guys, I have to tell you something. Hard boy. Thank God, are you finally going to tell us what happened in the mall that day? Mr. Deadman. What? No. Pikachu. You have to tell us, otherwise we won't listen to that other thing you have to say. Mr. Deadman. We don't have thing time for this. Hard boy. Make time. Mr. Deadman. Ugh, never mind I'll just call Hagrick. Pikachu. Why? What is so important? Mr. Deadman. Are you finally going to shut up and listen? Pikachu. Only if you tell us what happened in the Muller Lear. Mr. Deadman. We don't have time for that. You and your whole class are in danger. Hard boy. We're in danger. Go ahead, we're listening. Mr. Deadman. Finally. So you know how you guys go to USJ today? Pikachu. Yeah, how do you know about that? Mr. Deadman. Just shut up and listen. The Love, League of Villains, are planning to attack USJ tomorrow, to kill All Might. They have Nomus. Nomus are deceased individuals whose bodies have been heavily modified by a doctor, in order to hold multiple quirks, and reanimated to act as mindless super soldiers for the League of Villains. They're abnormally strong, you won't be able to win from them. Pikachu. What the? Mr. Deadman. I need you to tell your homeroom teacher, Mr. Aizawa, about this. The trip to USJ has to be cancelled. Hard boy. How do you know about all of that? Mr. Deadman. Isn't important. What important is is that I know it and that you guys don't go to USJ. Now go and tell Aizawa. Pikachu. But how? Mr. Deadman. Questions come later, just hurry up. Pikachu. Yes sir. Hiroshima and Kaminari were both on their way to school when they got these texts from Izuku. As they notice how serious Izuku is, they are into school in a hurry. They both meet each other at the entrance and run to the classroom together. As they enter the classroom, no one is there yet. F, what do we do? We go and try to find a teacher off course. While they are on their way to the principal's office, they run into an irritated Aizawa. Aizawa sensei, thank god we found you. Mind explaining why you two were in such a hurry? Class doesn't start for 10 minutes. Let's just get to the point, we can't go to USJ. What? Villains of the lob will be attacking there. Yay, they're trying to kill All Might. You sure, that's not something to joke about, boys. We are not joking. He told you this bull. The friend we met in the park once. Yeah and he said that there will be Nomus. Nomus are some sort of humans who were turned into monsters with multiple quirks. Well that friend of yours sure does have a big imagination. Out of the way boys, I have a class to teach. Mr. Aizawa. Dinky shouted, but Aizawa was already walking away. F. Maybe he is right, maybe Izuku is just trying to prank us. No way, he sounded way too serious. Let's just hope it was a bad prank. The boys agreed on that and walked to class together. They had a few classes before going to USJ, but they just couldn't focus. 
The boys kept thinking about what Izuku said. Izuku put his vigilante outfit on, he just got a text from Kirishima that Aizawa thinks it is a prank, and they won't cancel the trip. Ugh, what did I expect? Of course they won't cancel the trip. The students were about to arrive at USJ, so Izuku had to hurry. He floated to USJ as fast as he could. When he arrived the students were already there, but the villains weren't. Thank god, now I'll just have to wait for the villains to arrive. The now invisible vigilante sat down on the walls of USJ. He looked through the glass windows, waiting for something to happen. After a while he saw it, black smoke started to appear. It turned into a portal. Kuragiri, it's beginning. The first person to step out of the portal was Shigaraki, after him came Toga and Dabi. Everyone's eyes were now on the villains. With Kirishima and Kaminari. The boys saw the villains coming out of the portal. F. So Izuku was right. Damn, we shouldn't have doubted him. That's when the crusty villain spoke up. Where is All Might? He's not here, Aizawa Sensei answered. I wonder if he'll come if we kill some of these students. The crusty man laughed as Mr. Aizawa ran towards him. The fight has started. With a certain vigilante. Izuku sighed. Here we go. He stood up and walked through the wall, into USJ. He was still invisible as he floated towards the closest villain. He turned visible and took the villain down easily. He took a few more villains down, when he noticed that the students were in trouble. He floated towards the class and helped taking the attacking villains down. He turned to the students. He noticed Kirishima, Kaminari and Kach-chan, so he quickly turned on his voice changer. Get the pros. Who are you? A pinkish alien girl asked. You're a, at your service he said as he made a small bow. The vigilante. In the flesh, now hurry up and go get the pros. A new villain ran towards them, but an elbow on his nose and a kick in his nuts was enough to take the bad guy down. The vigilante looked behind him and saw that most of the students already ran to get the pros. Good. A few villains ran at him, and he got a hard punch in his stomach, the villain's cork sent Izuku flying through the air. The vigilante landed on a boat. Are you okay? The frog-like girl stood in front of him. Next to her stood a stressed out great guy. I'm fine, thanks. Hey you're a vigilante right, get us off this boat I can't die yet, I haven't even touched you Rose's boobies yet. The grape guy yelled. You, I already don't like this guy. Sure thing, grab my hands. The great pervert quickly grabbed his hand, the frog girl holds onto his other hand. Izuku sets off and floats up from the boat, the two students hanging onto him. He carefully sets the students on land. Go get yourself to safety he said as he floats away. Izuku floats upwards to get a better view at what was happening. He saw Aizawa fighting Shigaraki, it looked like he needs some help. The vigilante floats to the fighting guys as Aizawa get kicked to the ground. Izuku lands next to Aizawa. Are you okay, teach? He jumps into a fighting pose, ready to fight. Yure, what are you doing here? Saving you and your students off course. Shigaraki runs at Izuku, aiming a kick at his thigh. Shigaraki's leg goes right through the ghost. How nice to see you here, Shigaraki. Oh shut up, don't get involved in this. Go back to saving homeless rats, Shigaraki hisses. Izuku hits the man in his stomach with his knee. Scared, because you know I can beat you. Keep dreaming, kid. Izuku throws a few weak kicks at the crusty man. Aizawa notices that Izuku is not being serious. Kid, stop playing with him, Aizawa says as he stands up. Ah oh, sorry, Aizawa sensei he turns to Shigaraki, let's get serious, shall we? It took the vigilante only a few seconds to get the crusty man down. Ever heard of lip boom, fur? Izuku laughs as he looks at the villain on the ground. Sent the Nomu and Shigaraki grumbles to someone they called C. Kurgiri appears behind the villain, and a big some sort of bird-like creature steps in. Uo Nomu. It's the first time I've seen one, they really are impressive. Aizawa sighs. This kid really can't take anything seriously he mumbles to himself. The Nomu starts attacking Izuku, he sets a few steps backwards and looks around. He spots Toga and a hero fighting, he quickly floats towards them and snatches Toga's knife. Thanks love. Before Toga could respond the vigilante sets off and jumps onto the Nomu's neck. The Nomu tries to get the boy off him, but Izuku sets his knife in the creature's neck and holds onto it. Yo. This is epic. Erase your head look. I'm riding a Nomu. Okay this is fun, but I have to stop playing around. Let's find this thing's weak spot. Hmm, his brain looks the most fragile. Izuku rips the knife out of the Nomu's head. He climbs up the neck and sticks the knife in the creature's brain. The bird-like creature screeches. Yeah, this definitely is his weak spot. Dot the vigilante throws a few kicks and stabs at the brain of the creature, until the Nomu falls down. Izuku is now standing on the dead Nomu's back. Woohoo. That was fun Izuku cheers as he jumps off it. The treat. The crusty man screams. The remaining villains quickly ran through the portal. The only one not immediately running towards the portal is Toga. She is running at Izuku. My knife she hisses. It sure is lovely, thanks for letting me borrow it. Love the vigilante grins as he tosses the knife into Toga's averaged hand. He watches Toga running through the portal just like most of the other villains. Aizawa is now coming the vigilante's way. 
Why did you let her go? Hmm, she isn't as bad as most people think. Aizawa curiously looks at the vigilante. I will never understand this kitty thought. So can I go or? Do I have a chance in stopping you? They know. See you Aizawa sensei. You ray out. Izuku turns around and simply walks towards the exit. A few weird looks at him, but nobody dared to try and stop him. As soon as he is out of USJ he turns invisible and floats home. After the incident at USJ the injured were brought to recovery girl's office. There weren't much people injured though, thanks to the vigilante Yurei. Bakugo, Hiroshima, Mina and Kaminari were talking about what happened in the halls. They see Aizawa sensei coming out of recovery girl's office, now walking towards the students. How are the injured doing, Mr. Aizawa? They're doing fine, nobody was injured that badly. The students let out a sigh of relief. Hiroshima, Kaminari, come with me. We have something to discuss. Mina and Bakugo looked at the two boys, curiously. The boys just nodded and followed their homeroom teacher. The two came to me earlier today, telling me exactly what was going to happen later that day. Sorry for not taking you too serious. It's alright, Aizawa sensei. Now, how did you know about the attack? We already told you, a friend of ours texted us about it. What is their name? Izuku. Surname. We don't know, for some reason he won't tell us. Hmm, so he texted you too about it. That's correct, yes. Can I see the texts? The boys hesitated as they looked at each other. They both knew that they couldn't win against Aizawa, Kirishima sighed as he pulled out his phone and handed it over to his teacher. He slowly goes through the texts between Izuku and his two students. Well that is interesting, do you know where he lives? Kirishima and Kaminari lock eyes. It stayed silent for a while, and then they both shake their head. Aizawa pinched the bridge or his nose. They don't even know where he lives ugh, this is going to be a long day. I'm going to borrow your phone for a while, I hope you don't mind Kirishima. I'm going to ask one of our hackers to track down his device. We must and shall find this Izuku kid. Hiroshima swallowed. This is why Izuku didn't tell us about what happened at the mall. This is why he doesn't trust us with that. Damn, I should have understood earlier. With Izuku. The green had just arrived at his cabin, this sure was a long day, I can finally relax. He changes into his normal outfit and slumps onto the couch. He grabbed his phone to play a video game when he notices he got a text. Brauchia Freddy MFS. Members. Hard boy, Pikachu, Mr. Deadman. Pikachu. Izuku. Aizawa has tracked down your phone and is now on his way to your house or whatever you live in. I have no idea what the chicken nugget you're hiding, but hide it quickly. You don't have much time. Pikachu. You dude, Kirishima here, Aizawa stole my phone, I am so sorry about this, I just now realized that this is the reason you don't trust us with your secrets. We won't ask you any more unwanted questions. Aizawa is well on his way to my cabin, no f no, I'm going to die. Fast. I got to hide my vigilante outfit. Izuku grabs his vigilante outfit and presses onto the floor to find the loose plank. He found it and quickly stuffs in his outfit. He stands up to look at his work, looks good I'm they won't notice it. He panicked when he heard a knock on the door. He's already here okay calm down, breathe. Izuku took a deep breath and put a smile on his face when he walked to open the door. When he opened the door he saw the homeless looking man standing there. Oh, hey I'm a racerhead. How do you know about me being a racerhead? I'm an underground hero. A friend of mine has told me all about you. Aizawa frowned. Maybe we should discuss that later, I believe you have a few questions for me. Aizawa nodded slowly, still looking suspiciously at the boy. Come in. Izuku smiled politely at the man in front of him. Aizawa stepped inside the cabin and looked around. Where are your parents? Izuku walked towards the table and waved for Aizawa to come and sit down. On a business trip Izuku lied. Aizawa raised an eyebrow as he walked towards the table to sit down. They both sat down at the table, Izuku put his elbows on the table, and let his head rest on his hands as he looked at Aizawa. Don't lie to me kid, where are your parents? Izuku rolled his eyes. I don't live with my parents, haven't seen them for years. Did you run away? Ha! More like. Jump. Away. You could say that, yeah. What's your name? Izuku. I believe Kirishima and Kaminari already told you about me not wanting to tell them my surname. You aren't exception. Sorry Amara Aizawa I'm not telling you. Izuku put on another polite smile, which irritated the underground hero. How did you know about the attack? I have a friend, who does quite dangerous work which sometimes involves villains. He overheard villains talking about the plan, because I know some UA students he asked me for help. I simply just texted what he told me to, nothing more. Who is this friend? Izuku smiled and leaned backwards, resting the back of his head in his hands. The infamous vigilante, Yurei. Yurei ha. How long have you known him for? Before he started his work as vigilante, but don't think I'm telling you anything. He surely wouldn't appreciate it if I told you, I promise to not betray him. Of course, what did I expect Aizawa grumbles. If you don't have any more questions, I would appreciate it if you go home. I have other things to do. And leave you here. No way. 
I don't need help, thank you very much Mr. Ozawa. Sorry, but you're coming with me, kid. Izuku sighs, he knows that if he struggles Ozawa will use his quirk on him. And he certainly doesn't want that to happen. Also, they now know about this cabin, and Izuku really doesn't have the motivation to find a new place to hide. Alright. The underground hero didn't expect that. He stared at the kid in front of him. Alright I'm coming with you, why so surprised? Azawa blinks and shakes his head. Oh never mind, I just didn't think you would give up that fast. I didn't give up, I only just realized that I don't have another option. Azawa and Izuku both stand up and walk to the door. Anything you want to take with you? If he now takes his vigilante outfit with him that would seem suspicious. I'll just pick it up right before I go on patrol tonight. Nope, I'm good. When they just stepped out of the cabin they heard a voice coming their way. Izuku. Aha. Hagrook stopped running as soon as she saw Ozawa. Hey, hi Mr. Ozawa, what are you doing here? She looked shocked, probably expecting the worst. Before Ozawa could say anything Izuku walked towards Hagrook. Hi Hagrook. When he stood right in front of the invisible girl he whispered don't worry, he doesn't know dot he thinks I'm just a runaway. Hagrook let out a sigh of relief at those words. Now Ozawa came walking their way. Hagrook, what are you doing here? Do you know Izuku? Hagrook looks at the greenette with a questionable look. What do I say? Her eyes said. Izuku just shrugged his shoulders. Doesn't matter. As long as you don't say anything that blows my cover. We're friends, I met him when I was about 10. Why didn't you report him? He's a runaway. What? Why would I report him? He's my friend. Because the police could help him. TSK sure. To me he seemed pretty happy with his whereabouts. Azawa took the boy to the police station, where he would get interrogated. The detective Tsukauchi has a quirk which can sense whether someone is telling the truth or not. That wouldn't be a problem, if I just don't answer the question he won't discover anything. Name? Izuku. True. Surname? We've already been over this, I can't tell you. True. Why can't you tell me? No response, silence. Tsukauchi sighs. Quirk. Another silence. Age? 14. True. What are your parents' names? Izuku smiles politely. My parents don't exit to me anymore. How old were you when you ran away? About 10. True. Why did you run away? Because I gave up. I gave up on my dreams, on my life. True. Any secrets you'd like to share with us? They're called secrets for a reason, Sherlock. Tsukauchi sighs as he stands up, he clearly gave up on the interrogation. So what's going to happen with me now? Are you going to send me to a foster home? Most likely, yes. Unless we find a better option. Izuku sighs, he knew that this was going to happen, he just didn't want to admit to it. The 14-year-old didn't like the idea of being put in a foster home, there goes his freedom. A while later, Aizawa and Tsukauchi walk into the interrogation room. Izuku, we have news for you. The boy smiles, signifying them to continue. Aizawa here would like to adopt you. That took the boy off guard. The polite smile fades slowly as he looks shocked at Aizawa. I mean sure, Aizawa can act like a dad sometimes. But I didn't think he would actually want to become one. The boy is still looking shocked at Aizawa, which makes the man uncomfortable. Hey, is something wrong, Izuku? When Izuku notices that his shocked expression hurts the man, he quickly shakes his head and puts on another smile. No, no. I'm just surprised, sorry. Why so surprised? Well, based off what I heard from Yurei, you didn't really sound like a dad figure. The underground hero looks a little offended and hurt, that made Izuku realize he should probably change the subject. So are you in present Mick married yet? Uo is he going to be my other dad? Two pro heroes as my parents cool. Izuku acts excited while he actually is a little disgusted, as you probably noticed, he doesn't really like heroes that much. Well how do you know about me and Mick? Having a vigilante as my best friend can be pretty useful. Yurei always comes home with some sweet rumors. Izuku has been living with the Reisherhead in present Mick. The two pro heroes have an insane amount of cats, for some reason the cats really like the boy. The animals have been sleeping in Izuku's room and have been playing with him every day. Every night, before he goes on patrol, he has to go to his old cabin to get his vigilante outfit. This evening and Izuku was asleep, although that's what his adopted parents thought. Izuku was actually waiting for it to turn 12pm, so he could go on patrol. Five minutes before 12, Izuku didn't want to wait any longer, so he stood up and snuck out. He floated to his cabin and put on his vigilante outfit. His patrol was going pretty smooth, he stopped a man from our at ping a girl, beat up some thugs and escaped from hawks. The vigilante was sitting on top of a roof, watching over the city. He was so lost in thoughts that he at first didn't even notice the fact that heroes were surrounding him. A pink-colored aroma floats towards the boy as he turns around. Midnight. Izuku thought before he passes out. The pro heroes take off their mask when the pink smoke has disappeared. The racer head and hawks quickly run towards the vigilante on the floor. The racer head stretches out his hand to take off the vigilante's bunny mask. Instead of grabbing the mask, his hand goes right through the boy. 
Izuku had activated his quirk and made himself go through right before he passed out. We can't touch him. Damn it, what do we do now? We'll wait for him to wake up. Then what? He'll probably just disappear like always. Almost all the pro heroes decided that they should just give up on trying to capture the vigilante, except for Aizawa. I think I have a plan. As soon as Izuku woke up he sat up and looked at the heroes in front of him. Well dot. He moved his hand to his face to feel his mask still on. Good, my court did its job. Now he turned his head slightly as he recognized the heroes, Erasurehead, Midnight, Hawks and Present Mick. Hi heroes, what a pleasure to see you. What brings you to this roof tonight? Same as every night, kid. I don't quite get it, why do you? Heroes. Try so hard to capture me, a vigilante. Because you spend so much time on chasing me, you have less time for doing your original work. This is part of our work, you're still a child after all. And that child does your job better than you do. Izuku grins under his mask at the heroes' faces. Are they only realizing this now? So, how do you find Izuku? Is he behaving? The vigilante turns to erase your head and present Mick as he said this. How do you know about the fact that we adopted Izuku? Oh, me and the little bean have been meeting up. Just to chat about stuff like normal friends do. Ha. Huh? How? He's normally with us all day. Correct. All day, Aizawa. The vigilante does his job at night. Erase your head and present Mick exchange looks. Oh damn, maybe I shouldn't have said that, now they're going to make sure I don't sneak out at night. Hmm, doesn't matter, it's not like they can stop me anyways. Hmm, it's been fun chatting with you, but duty calls. Izuku was about to turn around when Aizawa spoke up. You're not going anywhere, unless you want me to activate my quirk on you. The vigilante froze for a second. Oh? So we're getting violent now? I already told you you shouldn't do that, unless you want me dead. Tell us your identity or I'll activate my quirk on you. You ain't got that nerve, Aizawa. The vigilante steps towards the hero. But I've been thinking, maybe revealing my identity is a good idea after all. If I'm going to reveal my identity I won't do it so easily, obviously. The heroes didn't expect that, why would you want to reveal his identity? You're probably thinking, why would you want to reveal his identity? It's simple, actually. I am just so done with having to lie to all my friends and acquaintances. Izuka raised his arms and let his head rest on his hands. He closed his eyes. But as I said, I'm not going to reveal it this easily. So, how about a game? Multiple games actually. If you win all three games from me, I'll tell you my real name. The pro heroes were staring at the vigilante with confused looks. So, do you accept or deny? Erasurehead, Midnight, Hawks and Present Mick exchanged looks for a moment. Then they all nodded silently. We accept. Great. Izuku claps his hands, then that settled. See you tomorrow. You four, this rooftop at 1pm. The next day, Izuku just woke up and went downstairs. Aizawa and Yamada, present Mick, were talking about something obviously serious. They both seemed nervous about it. Hey. The two men didn't see or hear Izuku coming downstairs, so they were startled by the sudden voice behind them. What's wrong? Are you too nervous about something? It's just nothing. Just, work. Oh so this is about Yurei's little game, isn't it? The men now fully turned to the boy. How do you know about that? Well, I chat with him sometimes. He's my friend after all. Now Dizawa decided to speak up. We don't want you communicating with him anymore. It could be dangerous. Dangerous? He's my friend. There's nothing dangerous about having a friend. He told us you sometimes sneak out at night to chat with him. Sneaking out to chat in the middle of the night, that's not what normal friends do. Don't worry, I won't get hurt. I have my quirk after all, you know go through. I can't get kicked down by a thug or something, their attacks will just go right through me. That thought seemed to comfort the dads a little. Oh and talking about Yurei's game. It not a trap or something, he just wants to reveal his identity and do it in a stylish way. Izuku walked towards the kitchen to make himself breakfast. And the games will probably be something like hide and seeker tag. The boy laughed under his breath. The games are surely going to be fun. As soon as his adopted parents have gone off to work, Izuku sneaks out. It took the boy a while to convince the men that he could be home alone, especially Aizawa is way too protective. It was already 1pm when the boy arrived at his old cabin to pick up his vigilante outfit. I'm late. Izuku was hopping from roof to roof, trying to find the roof from last night. He noticed four pro heroes standing on a roof nearby, ah there it is. The vigilante quickly floated to the roof. He heroes. Sorry, I'm late. I have a little too overprotective, friends. Hey Yure. Hox was the only one not grumpy. So, are you all ready for the games? Hox nodded excitedly while the other heroes just hummed. Aw oh man. Why are all of you, except for Hox, so grumpy? Aren't you excited that I'm going to reveal my identity? You aren't going to reveal your identity if we don't win from you. And we all know that we don't have a chance on winning from you. Don't worry, I'll go easy on you. Now let's get to the first game. Izuku had no intention of winning any of the games. 
The only reason they were going to play the games is because the vigilante wanted to have some fun, but the heroes didn't know that. The heroes were extremely nervous. The first game is going to be intelligence game. We're going to play chess. Now the heroes officially lost all their last hope, none of them were good chess players. The vigilante just laughed at their disappointed faces. Hey, don't lose hope yet. I know none of you all are particularly good in chess, so that's why you may choose someone else to play against me instead. Just call Nezu or something, I don't care. Well why would you let us call Nezu for help? He's the most intelligent person we know, he'll beat you and you know that. Listen here, heroes. I have no intention of winning, I'm just here to have some fun. The pro heroes exchange confused looks, what does he mean he has no intention of winning? After a while they shrugged it off and just decided to roll with it. They called Nezu and asked him to come. They didn't tell him why he had to come to that roof, because if they did Nezu would only start asking questions like what if it's a trap. Nobody was willing to listen to the rat's crap. So the chimera came to the rooftop, not knowing what was going to happen. Nezu was pretty surprised when he saw four pro heroes and an infamous vigilante standing there with a chessboard. Hi Nezu. The vigilante waved excitedly. May I ask what a vigilante is doing with a chessboard while being surrounded by pro heroes? Erasure had steps towards Nezu to explain the situation. Yurei decided to finally reveal his identity if we win three games against him. First game is chess, you're the expert in chess, so that's why we called you here. Yurei accepted a game of chess against me. You clearly don't lack confidence, Nezu. I already told the other heroes here, I'm here to have fun. So come on, let's play chess. Izuku walked towards the closest picnic table and placed the chessboard upon it. He sat down and waved Nezu to come and sit down too. Let the best chess player win. The first game has started. At the beginning the vigilante decided to go easy on Nezu, but when they began he noticed that the chimera is on a whole other level. Izuku knew he could never win this, but he tried his best anyway. Maybe he could learn something from this, not go to hell, I ain't learning from heroes. Heroes are disgraces to humanity, although almost no one notices that. Nezu ended up winning the game. Damn you really are as good as they say, Nezu. You're not bad either, Yurei. The two smile at each other. You couldn't see Yurei's smile because of his mask, but it surely was honest. On to the next game. Oh and Nezu I might have to ask you something about the last game later, so don't go home yet. I wasn't planning on going home, now I'm here I'm going to watch and enjoy those games of yours. Alright. Izuku turned towards the four heroes, who were sitting on a bench. You ready for the second game? This time it'll be you four who have to win from me, I won't allow you to ask anyone to help you. The heroes stood up from the bench, ready for the second game. So for the second game, we're going to play tag. Izuku clapped his hands excitedly. Hawks and present Mick just laughed as Erasure had groans. You still act like a kid sometimes. We thought you were like 16 or something. Now you're acting like a 6 year old. Izuku gasped dramatically. That hurts my feelings, Hawks. Midnight, present Mick and Hawks laughed at Izuku's childishness. Don't be fools, guys. Don't you get it? A game of tag, how are we supposed to play that? We can't even touch him. As sharp as always, erase your head. But don't worry, you'll be in a great advantage. I wouldn't be using my quirk for the whole game. It's like playing a game of tag with a quirkless kid. Like old times. He whispered the last part so nobody could hear it. The heroes their faces brightened. You're not going to use your quirk at all. Nope. This is going to be child's play. Izuku grinned under his masks. Are you sure about that, heroes? The vigilante walked to the edge of the roof, he looked down to see how high up they were. A normal person wouldn't survive this full, glad I'm not normal. He turned around towards the heroes. I believe you're all familiar with the rules so, let the second game begin. Izuku let himself fall backwards from the building. Hawk sets off and flew after the boy, but as soon as he reaches the edge of the building the vigilante is already gone. The winged man turned his head to look at the other heroes behind him, but they were already off to find the vigilante. Present Mick quickly ran down the stairs, hoping the vigilante would go for lower ground. The loud hero isn't quite the fan of roofs. As Present Mick ran down the stairs he heard a noise coming from a window. Yurei was about to climb through the window when he saw the blonde hero. The vigilante gave him a polite smile, made a two-finger salute as he jumped out of the window again. This kid. Hawks had spotted the vigilante running through an alleyway, and he was now chasing the boy. Izuku made a few turns, attempting to get rid of the hero who was currently chasing him. It would be so much easier if he could just use his quirk, but he promised not to use it. The vigilante decided to run towards the nearest forest, Hawks would have trouble seeing the boy through the trees. On his way to the forest he saw a racer head on a roof. Damn it he spotted me. Dot the underground hero and Hawks are now both chasing Izuku. Izuku ran into the forest and took cover under the trees. The boy looked up to the sky and saw no sign of the winged hero. The racer head however was still chasing the boy, the pro hero was getting dangerously close. Yes, I'm going to let them win but not this quickly. We only just started. He made a quick turn, the racer head couldn't see him for a second, this was his chance. 
The boy immediately climbed up a tree and sat down on the lowest stable branch. Aizawa didn't see him up in the tree, the man was confused at Yurei's sudden disappearance. Erasure had grabbed his phone out of his pocket and quickly contacted the other heroes. Yurei was still in the forest, he was sure of it. It was impossible for the vigilante to get out of such a big forest this quickly. Aizawa had sent his location, in a few minutes the other three pro heroes arrived at the forest. Izuku was jumping from tree branch to tree branch. He looked down to see Midnight walking while looking at her phone. Aizawa must have sent his location to the other pro heroes. Midnight was getting closer and closer towards the tree where Izuku was sitting in. He moved a little closer into the shadows and leaves of the tree. As he moved the branch made a muffled sound. Midnight looked up to see two panicked eyes staring at her under a mask. The female pro hero quickly used her quirk and shot pink colored aroma at the vigilante. Izuku went limp and fell out of the tree. With a harsh smash she landed on the ground at Midnight's feet. Yes. Woohoo. Midnight cheered at her own victory, but the game wasn't over yet. She messaged the other pro heroes and sent her location. When she put away her phone and bend it over to touch the vigilante and win the game, she saw that Yurei was not laying at her feet anymore. The vigilante sat in a nearby tree while waving at her. You didn't think I was that dumb, did you? I learned from last time, love. He had upgraded his mask so Midnight's quirk wouldn't work on him, as long as he has his mask on. The other pro heroes came running towards Midnight. What happened? Where is he? The female pro hero pointed at Izuku, now everyone turned their heads to see the vigilante waving joyfully. Come and get me. Izuku stood up and jumped to the next tree branch. The pro hero's on his heels again. Oh the chicken nugget is here too, jumping from tree to tree will only slow me down. Let's get to lower ground. The vigilante jumped out of a tree and just ran. He knew the forest pretty well, because he had lived there till Azawa found him. He decided that he should go to his cabin, maybe he could hide in the secret basement there for a while. When Izuku arrived at his cabin he saw Hawks already standing there, the pro hero was blocking the entrance. Erasure had shot his capture weapon at the vigilante, but he dodged it. He turned towards the tired pro hero and dodged a few more of his attacks. Suddenly he felt a hand on his shoulder. I forgot about the chicken nugget. He turned around to see Hawk standing there. Oh man, you got me. It was just starting to get fun. So, we won. Yup. Hawk's exhausted face brightened. Let's get back to the roof we came from, Nezu is probably still there, and I have to ask him something for the last game. Erasure had in Hawk snotted, Erasure had grabbed his phone out of his pocket, and messaged the other heroes to go back to the roof. Izuku and Reishahad were walking together, Hawks had already flown away, he doesn't have quite the patience that is needed. Why did you go easy on us? What do you mean, Reishahad? You knew Hawks was standing behind you, you aren't that stupid. Ouch. How nice of you, but I already told you. I'm not planning on winning. And, I can't wait for the last game, it's going to be so much fun. What is the last game? You'll see. Last one on the rooftop is a rotten egg. Izuku ran, Aizawa rolled his eyes and eventually followed. As the vigilante arrived Hawks was already there, a few seconds later Erasure had joined them. Nezu looked up from the book he was reading. Where did he get that book from? So how did it go? Who won? We won. Erasure had and I had cornered and he. Hawks excitedly told Nezu what happened, he was still telling his story when the other heroes arrived. Hey Yure. Hi, SHOTA Hawks. They owe present Mick, you ready for the last game? And not really I'm exhausted. Do you know how much I ran today my legs are killing me. That's alright cause. That's alright I'm dying. Can't you see? Present Mick dramatically falls on the ground while holding onto his knee. You're not dying and even if you were it's not like it matters. What? Because the next game won't be played by you heroes. Ha. Huh? I would like to battle some future heroes. I'm thinking about one of the UA classes, I would love to see them try to take me down. Only if I have your approval of course, Nezu. You can't battle a class they're not even real heroes yet. If we could just nearly win from you how are they supposed to? Sure eh, you have my approval. The heroes looked at the UA principal in shock. That's dangerous. You can't just. Yeah. Now I was thinking about class 1 if that's alright. 1A those are first years. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that you class, Aizawa? Don't you dare hurt my students. What about Mineta? Don't you dare hurt my students except Mineta. I have no idea why you would want to battle first years, but sure. The shock on the hero's faces became even bigger, why would Nezu let him battle first years? Doesn't he see how dangerous that can be? The truth is that Nezu really didn't care. So, are the students at school in the weekends or do we have to continue the games tomorrow? What of course the students don't go to school in the weekends. What kind of school do you go to? Izuku coughed none, he whispered under his breath. Alright so let's finish this tomorrow. When does your class have time, Aizawa? We're going to the fake city for training at 11am, I guess I can cancel the lesson so you can battle them. You have a fake city just for training damn I wish I hadn't gave up on my dreams of being a hero. We'll see you tomorrow at that fake city of yours then. I'll be there too Hawk said. 
Of course, the chicken nugget doesn't want to miss anything. Me too. Same. I guess I can make some time free, I'll be there too. So Nezu, Hawks, Present Mick and Midnight are all going. I bet the students will be confused as f. The next day, Izuku woke up at 10am. Aizawa and Yamada had already gone off to work. The greenette stood up quickly, he overslept. Today was an important day, today he was going to reveal his identity. He is going to reveal his identity in front of Koch-chan, Hiroshima, Kaminari, the rest of 1A, Erasure Hat and a few other nosy heroes. And he is going to see Haguruk again. He hadn't seen the invisible girl since Aizawa and Yamada adopted him. Or he haven't seen her at all, because, well you know she's invisible. Izuku arrived at Yue's fake city, he was a little late because breaking into Yue's property is not always that easy. The class was already there, so were Nezu, Midnight, Erasure Head, Hawks and Present Mick. The vigilante casually walks into the city, everyone's eyes were on him in no time. Hm, <laughs> A-T-T-E-N-T-I-O-N, I love it. Isn't that the infamous vigilante Yue, what is he doing here? Some of the students get in a fighting pose. Oh man, I always get the same welcome. Can't you give me a more pleasant welcome? Now it feels like I'm the criminal here. Well but you are a criminal right? Izuku just waved away this comment with his hand. And technically yes, but I did save more people than those fake heroes of yours did. Yurei. Don't lecture my students about how bad heroes are, you'll only make them lose hope in society. Izuku shrugs. Why can't they just know the truth? Come on you're not here to give a sermon. Let's get to that game of yours. Alright kids. The vigilante clapped his hands as he turned towards the class. I'm here because of a game I decided to play. I made an agreement with the Racer Head, Hawks, Midnight and Present Mick that if they win 3 games from me, I will reveal my identity. They have successfully won the first 2 games. But for the last game I'll be battling you guys. So if I'm revealing my identity or not is now in your hands. Absolutely no pressure at all. Why would you want to battle us? Of all classes, why us? You seemed interesting. And there's another reason, but you'll find that one out later. Chilly anyways so let's get to the rules. Honestly there aren't much rules, it's just a battle all of you against me. The game is over when either someone gave up or if I or you guys are not able to fight any further. The class exchanged confused and nervous looks. This may seem weird, but it'll all make sense as soon as I've lost. Ready or not let's begin. Nobody moved. Come on guys, you have to take me down. Come with me. Come on don't be scared. Now Bakugo got pissed. Of course Koch Chan got pissed, he is always pissed. The specky blonde ran towards the vigilante while shooting explosions out of his hands. Bakugo threw in a fist with explosions, but Yurei dodged it easily. Now the others began to move too, some of them were still confused and scared, while others were excited. And there were people like Todoroki, who couldn't give f. A nice wall shot at the vigilante, Izuku knew he couldn't dodge it by going to the side, the wall was way too big and close. So Izuku floated up, and landed beside the wall. Now he saw the person who the ice wall belonged to. Hey, aren't you Dobby's brother? Shoto Todoroki am I right? Todoroki looked a little bit confused, while his face was still emotionless as ever. Yes. But I don't know someone named Adabi. Someone else came flying to the vigilante with the outstretched arm, ready to punch. When the hand was almost at the vigilante's head, he grabbed the wrist and threw the person on the ground. He didn't even bother looking at who he just threw, instead he turns to Todoroki again. Oh of course, you know him as Tui Todoroki. What? No, he's dead. Sorry to break it to you, love, but you're so called. Dead. Brother is alive. And, not sure if it matters, he is a villain. Todoroki and a few bystanders were shocked. You know, the one with staples and burnt skin at USJ, yay that's him. Although I shouldn't call him Tuya, it pisses him off. That's not true. Todoroki was frustrated and confused, out of frustration he threw another ice wall at the vigilante. Although this time the ice wall was much bigger and almost impossible to dodge. So Izuku didn't try dodging it, he just stood there till the ice wall reached him. When the ice wall almost hit him he did go invisible and go through. Actually the boy didn't plan on using that side of his court too much, it would make the battle impossible for 1A. But right now he didn't have much of a choice. Almost everyone was shocked when the incredible ice wall hit the unbothered vigilante. Everyone except the pro heroes, the heroes knew very well how Yurei would never get down that easily. The pro heroes turned out to be right with their thoughts when the vigilante appeared behind Todoroki. Ice is getting a little cold and boring don't you think? Todoroki was startled by the sudden voice behind him. He turned around quickly to look into Yurei's eyes behind the mask. Izuku just laughed and set a few steps backwards, giving the half and half boy his space. I believe you can control fire with your left side. Why don't you use it? I wouldn't use my father's quirk, he is cruel. Oh endure. I guess I can agree, he is cruel. But that fire isn't his quirk is it? Ha. Huh? It's your quirk dumbass. And if you wanna beat me you're going to need it. But my father. I get it, sir issues. But one day you have to get over that trauma, and beat the f out of me with the fire of yours. It's your quirk, not his. 
Izuku turned around and walked away, with his head leaning on his hands. If you haven't figured it out yet, here is a tip work together. The future heroes looked at each other, at first confused then determined. They were going to work together, as a team. Good. Everyone made groups of 4 to 5 people. Those groups were going to attack the vigilante, one by one. First up were Mineta, Hagaru, Sero, Ojiro and Aoyama. They don't have a chance, but I'd love to see them try. The first group didn't have a tactic at all. Mineta just threw some of his grapes hopelessly. Sero threw some tape at the vigilante, but it wasn't very effective. Aoyama was eating cheese. Ojiro tried some close attacks, but he constantly got tape and grapes stuck to his tail. Hagrid already gave up, she was secretly friends with the vigilante, and she knew very well that they couldn't win from him. A few more teams came at him to try and take him down, but none of them succeeded so far. The next team was Bakugo, Uraka, Kirishima, Todoroki and Kaminari. This team might actually come close to having a chance. Bakugo flew at him with his explosions on his own, he didn't get any smarter, did he? Yurei dodged the angry Pomeranian casually. The ground and walls got crumbled by the explosions. Now Araka stepped in, she used her quirk on the crumbled stones. This girl is smarter than I thought. She made the stones fly up into the sky one by one. When she got enough stones she let them all fall on the vigilante like a meteor shower. That's almost impossible to dodge, this girl is interesting. Izuku made himself invisible and go through, and waited for the meteor shower to be over. When he made himself visible again, he was just standing there without even a scratch. That really pissed the team off. Now they ran at Yurei all together. Todoroki went so far too even using his left side. The fight did go on for a while, Izuku was now actually finding it a challenge to dodge the students' attacks. They don't know it yet, but they won. I'll wait for a good opportunity to reveal my identity. The whole team was exhausted, except for Bakugo. Of course, Koch-chan never gives up. Bakugo ran towards the vigilante while screaming Dai this is it. Izuku dodged Bakugo's attack and turned to the spiky-haired boy. Can't kill a dead person, now can you, Koch-chan? Bakugo stopped in his tracks, staring at the vigilante in shock. Daku. Kirishima and Kaminari came closer to the two boys, curious about what was happening. Yo isn't Daku the nickname Bakubro has for Izuku. The vigilante moved his hand to his mask, he sets the voice changer off. You won, congratulations. Izuku said with his own voice. Now Kirishima and Kaminari were actually flabbergasted. Hold up is that Izuku's voice. Izuku grabbed hold of his hut and took it off, revealing his curly green hair. Then he grabbed his mask with both of his hands, he took it off slowly. Everyone was now staring at the young boy's face. Nobody expected the vigilante to be this young. The heroes knew he was a kid, but a 14-year-old they didn't dare to think that. Now Hagaruk stood up and walked towards Izuku. Really izuku You had so many beautiful opportunities to reveal your identity, and you chose can't kill a dead person. Izuku laughed. Come on, you gotta admit it was kinda smooth. HMPF maybe, but you could've Atlas involved me. We've been friends for so long. Hagaruk was acting like she was hurt, while she mentally laughed at all her classmates' shocked faces. Now Azawa and Yamada ran towards the two. Izuku you are Yure. Yes sir, Izuku Midori at your service. He made a small little bow. Now Hawks joined the chat. Izuku Midori. Isn't that the boy who committed suicide four years ago? In the flesh. And will you remembered me. How sweet. Azawa gave the boy a serious concerned look. You faked your own death. Can you imagine how sad your parents and friends were? How could you do that? First of all, I don't believe anyone was sad about it. I didn't have friends, my father left me when I turned out to be corkless, and my mother stopped caring about me after that, I believe she blamed me for my father's disappearance. Kirishima stepped forwards now. Didn't you say you and Bakugo were childhood friends? Well yeah, we were. Till everyone thought I was corkless, if you want further information about me and Koch-chan's relationship you should ask Koch-chan. I believe he won't appreciate it if I tell you all what happened between us. Bakugo's face turned from shock to angry. Don't change the subject, stupid Deku. Why would you fake your own suicide? Yeah, and how come you said you were quirkless? Cause it seems pretty clear to me that you have a quirk. I didn't fake my suicide, I did jump off that building. Only when I hit the ground my quirk started working, I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know if I'm alive right now or if I'm a dead ghost, the only thing I know is that it keeps me from going to the afterlife. So you're dead? Most likely yes. Now Bakugo ran towards the vigilante, tears streaming down his face. Bakugo hugged his childhood friend. Izuku was startled for a moment, but then hugged him back. I think I hate you, stupid nerd. Why would you do that? Why w would you k kill yourself? Sorry, Koch-chan. Why you could've Atlas stayed and become a hero with me now why you have your quirk? Heroes are the reason I ended up dead, spiky boy. Azawa interrupted the two emotional boys. I've asked you multiple times, Yurei, but I never really got the answer. Why do you hate heroes? Why become a vigilante? 
because a vigilante atlas tried to save me when a hero didn't. The day of my suicide, me and Asmite were standing on the building I later jumped off. I had asked Asmite if I could become a hero, he said no and left me there. Stupid bitch Yamada mumbled, and his husband silently agreed. Right before I jumped a vigilante came to help me, he told me about what a vigilante was, but I had already gave up on life. I jumped. You know we actually have to take you in, right? Because what you've done is illegal and stuff. Yeah sure. But knowing my identity won't make catching me easier, sorry man. Hawks and the other heroes laughed slightly. Of course not, to be honest, they actually didn't really want to capture the boy. You dads, you two do realize that I, a vigilante, can be a child of two pro heroes. Azawa and Yamada suddenly became emotional. It's kinda sad, I almost started loving you too. Guess it can't be helped. Izuku acted like he didn't care, but actually he really loved his dads. He didn't want to leave them, they were amazing. But he has no choice. Suddenly he heard a crash behind him. On a nearby building a figure had appeared. I am here. Damn it, it's Asmite. The building the hero had appeared on was unstable, because of Bakugo's explosions and other attacks. Izuku noticed that the building was about to collapse. He really didn't care if Asmite fell, but there was a student standing under the building that was about to collapse. It seemed like nobody else noticed the building's unstableness. Guess I'll have to do the hero's work again. The building started collapsing, stones came falling down. Izuku rushed to the student who was about to be crushed by a big piece of the wall. He took her in his arms and brought her to a safe zone. When he looked back the building had fully collapsed. He carefully sets the student on the ground. Are you okay? He now noticed the student was a girl with brown hair and eyes. He recognized the girl as a Chaco Araka. Why yeah, thanks. Anytime, my lady. Araka blushed. Oh hell nah I'm not ready to be in a relationship. He quickly turned around to see what was happening. Hawks, present Mick and Erasurehead were mad at All Might. The number one pro hero tried defending himself, but nobody wanted to listen to his excuses. You, Asmite is here. I think I'm going. Wait. Izuku turned around to Araka. Thank you for saving me, again. That's what I do, love. Now if you excuse me I'm gonna go, I really have no intention of facing Asmite again. He walked towards the exit of the fake city. It was nice meeting you again, Uraraka. He sets off and floats out of the training city. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the story. If you did, please like the video and share it with your friend. Also hit that red subscribe button it's free. This really helped. I'll see you in the next part.